The headline in The Telegraph, I think, sums up what happened to Jay Slater best, and it's also the simplest. Jay Slater died after falling onto rocks. I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The Canary Islands High Court of Justice confirmed it had identified the body recovered in Tenerife as that of the missing 19-year-old. A spokesman said, We have positively identified Jay Slater. We can confirm from fingerprints that the body is that of Jay Slater and that the death was due to polytrauma due to polytrauma compatible with a fall in a rocky zone. What is polytrauma? Well, it is multiple fractures, so broken bones, and then also injuries to body organs. In other words, Jay, the poor lad, died instantly. He must have fallen from a great height, and um, I don't think it was just one simple impact. I think there were multiple impacts. And so one can only wonder where exactly he fell from, but certainly, well, where was he actually sort of walking that he thought that he could sort of do this? In any event, a family spokesman told Mail Online Today, quote, the whole family is absolutely broken. They are devastated. It's not the outcome they were hoping for. Initially, they thought, how could he be so close and yet be missed? But now, having seen the location... They appreciate the remoteness of it, and there's no criticism of the search. Now, I have to say, this is quite unfortunate, that only now do they appreciate the remoteness of it. Only now do they seem to kind of, what's the word, um, fully recognize and acknowledge the type of terrain, you know, in terms of the whole story of the terrain that they're dealing with. And now the... Criticism that has been there all along, oh, okay, we're sorry about that. Now, one cannot also help but review what took place that Monday morning, right? It was after three successive nights of raving. What happened that morning? What is Jay's state of mind? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Welcome to the many of you who have subscribed. There have been a couple of you who said, thank you, um, I, I have changed my mind on this and I appreciate your reasoned uh, analysis. I really appreciate um, the fact that I have perhaps had some kind of positive impact on some of you. Uh, so that is good to see. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So this is important to emphasize. Jay's state of mind was that he didn't want the night to end. And so his entire life ended. If he had a different state of mind, similar to Lucy's or Brad's, that he could sort of accept that the night was ending, that the weekend was ending, that the party was over, his life would have gone on and he would have had many other parties. I think more particularly, Jay's state of mind was that he wasn't thinking right. He made a number of critical errors, starting with taking the wrong turn, starting with not getting a proper idea of where he was when he left the Airbnb. Instead of waiting for the bus, he left on foot and he walked into an area that he was unfamiliar with and then he kept walking and he was walking into an area that he was unfamiliar with with an uncharged phone. When did he realize that his phone was really low? Did he check? Also, he was walking into this area when he was already thirsty, he was already compromised, he was already sleep deprived. And we know that he told Lucy that he was attempting, this is actually a quote from I think the Mail Online, that Jay told Lucy he was attempting to walk back to his accommodation. I think that part's true. He was trying to walk back to his accommodation. He probably had a lot of energy. He was probably all jazzed up, right? He couldn't sleep. He was all energized. But when they say it was a journey that would take around 11 hours, I don't think that's what he anticipated. I don't think he was thinking 
this is going to be an 11 hour walk. And that's another fault, not only of, I think, his thinking, but also the, the way the media has represented this. I've always felt this was a misrepresentation by the media because Jay never intended to walk 11 hours. If someone had said to him, do you know that this is going to be an 11 hour walk? He would have never have done that. And so, yes, we know that's what it would have amounted to. But the point is, he didn't know. This was another error. Also, Lucy said that her friend told her he was lost in the mountains, so he knew he was lost. But I think, although he was lost, I think he thought, you know what, I think my hotel's just over there towards the sea. And he told her that he wasn't aware of his surroundings and he needed a drink and that his phone was on 1%. Now, instead of waiting for a ride with Kasim or arranging with Lucy to pick him up or waiting for that bus, he left alone. He started taking shortcuts and he very quickly cut himself on a cactus. And this was mentioned in that frantic last phone call where Jay said he'd cut his leg on a cactus and he had no idea where he was. Now, I think it's likely this shortcut taking only got worse as he ventured further and further. So every time you take a shortcut, you're taking a risk and then you take a bigger risk and you want to take a more sort of severe shortcut. And each time he did, he was basically putting himself into more and more danger. This, the fact that he'd already cut his leg and was still persisting, the fact that all of these things are happening, I see that I've lost my, my the, the cell phone battery that I have, well, now it's run down and I'm still going to continue. The fact that I know I'm lost, I'm still going to continue was perhaps the clearest indication, but I'm just saying that this, the fact that he's cut his leg now he's actually injured, right? Besides being thirsty and his phone's low battery, the fact that he's injured and Jay still persists, I think shows that he was more than a little irrational. Instead of simply waiting or turning back, he persists and he got himself into more and more serious trouble. And I mean, we can only sympathize with him, but I do think that maybe is a factor of his youthfulness, his age and immaturity, but also... You know, it's just come from a rave. It's all about, it's lighthearted and fun. And it's about being young, right? Um, when do you take things seriously? And so where we are now raises three important and urgent questions. Number one, has his phone been found? I don't think it has, or it probably would have been reported. I think there's a very good chance his phone wasn't found and might never be found. If, if the phone fell with Jay and if Jay's body was badly broken in the fall, it's likely the phone was too. The phone may have been broken into little fragments. It's also quite possible the phone bounced off a rock and it's just not necessarily easy to recover either. If it's been difficult to find Jay, you can imagine fragments of a phone in a sort of black or dark rock would be also very hard to find. Number two, did he have a Rolex with him? Number three, what drugs was he on, if any, at the time of the incident? Now, it's not clear whether toxicology will be done. I think it should be done. But even if it is done, will those results be made public? Will that shed any more light onto what may have affected his state of mind? What may have made him more confident than he, perhaps he should have been? Now, what I do think is worth noting, and I say this with sensitivity and compassion, is just how reckless so many have been reaching out to one imaginative possibility after the next, one fiction after the next, one conspiracy after the next. Just maybe that happened, maybe that happened. Thinking nothing of blaming or implicating random people of murder. And then when faced with the reality, the reality that Jay's body has been found, and although he's not been officially identified, not through DNA, I think he's been identified through fingerprints and documents, but he's not been officially identified, we don't want to speculate on that. We don't want to speculate that, that it could be him and very likely is him. Why? We speculate on all these other things. Why not speculate on this? Well, it's because we can't face it. Because we are so bad at reality. We're good at fantasy and fiction and conspiracies and imaginative things, but we were really bad at reality. We're bad at facing reality. We're bad at accepting reality. We're bad at discerning reality. 
because we are in a very real denial of death when it comes to ourselves. And as I say that with sensitivity and compassion. In the end, this case was very simple. Jay's state of mind was that he didn't want the night to end, and so his entire life ended. And so I wonder whether we shouldn't observe what happened to him, and I include myself in the we. All of us should observe what happened to him and make sure we don't make a similar mistake, persisting, having a kind of hubris that ignores the more urgent situation, persisting when we should perhaps call it a day or, or night and return to our beds. I'm not going to take it further than that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.